Well, hello, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's been a very short while. Um, I've had many things on the cards, masters, jobs, all sorts of nonsense coming along. But I finally found some spare time and with all the scripts that I have been writing in the time that I've had free, we have loads to get into. So thank you very much for sticking around. Thank you very much for the subscribers still rising even in my absence. I thank the 503 subscribers. Um, if anyone would like to subscribe and watch this, please do. I try and throw videos up whenever I can. But without further ado, let's get into this. So today we're touching on a really kind of bizarre subject for those of you who don't really know this genre very well. This is the genre of the 41st millennium. This is Warhammer 40,000. This is a franchise that I have loved for close to a decade. Um... I play it routinely, I study the law routinely, and there's a lot of really interesting aspects about it which I'd love to talk about. For this, however, there is just one bit about it which I love more than anything, and that is the absolutely absurd armor design in this franchise. This franchise basically takes everything that is absolutely bizarre about modern tank design and just goes screw it we're going to turn it up by a hundred and so to start with i thought it'd be no better a place to get going than with the predator tanks of the space marine uh, chapters the adaptus astartes as they're known so for some background context in the 41st millennium humanity is the single greatest force in the galaxy but it is besieged by all sides Think 1945 Germany. There is communications issues, there is forces are just spread out all over the place. You know, planets are won and lost without anyone even having an idea that they've been lost. It's a bit it's a huge, huge situation. But amongst all of the chaos and all of the disaster that comes out of it, we have humanity's biggest shining light, and those being the the Space Marines, the Adaptus Astartes, the Emperor's Angels of Death. And they are humanity's super soldiers. They are these huge, seven, eight foot tall demigods with two hearts, three lungs, covered in a ton of power armor, which you know, are, are firing weapons with a, with a 75 caliber projectile, which is basically a grenade launcher that blows up upon contact with something. They are the ultimate war machines. And yet, they're still not even the biggest thing in terms of the context of what we're talking about, because even the Space Marines, with all their, their power and all their armor and all of their... I mean... They they would they destroy normal humans. They make normal humans just look pale by comparison. But even the space marines sometimes cannot take things on without support of armored vehicles. And the space marines have their own battle tanks. And the battle tank that they use is the Predator. So the Predator battle tank is the primary armored fighting vehicle of the Imperium Space Marine chapters in the 40k settings. Now these things are built upon the Rhino armored personnel carrier. So the Rhinos are the basis for several designs. Um, it's it's a bit like to take into context. It's a bit like the M10 and the M36 Jackson and the M7 Priest are all based upon the Sherman chassis. They're all based upon that same basic design. They're universally linked with various parts which makes the Rhino chassis one of the most unique designs within the 41st millennium. And so the Predator is based upon the Rhino and it acts as the Space Marine's primary combat tank. It can be set up in a variety of formations and configurations to give it an extra edge, which we'll go into even further down the line. So the Predator itself has its origins during what is known in the 40k setting as the Dark Age of Technology. This is a period and time of which mankind's understanding of science and technology is at its all-time high. This is eventually ended by what is known as the Age of Strife, when humanity basically falls on its ass and just forgets 90% of everything it's learned. As a result, the Predator is one of the oldest technologies that humanity can call upon. Um, it's one of the few surviving ones from the Dark Age of Technology, and was originally used by just 
by normal humans in their conflicts against species which were far more powerful. The initial requirement for the war machine is theorised to have actually come about during human contact with the Xenos race known as the Orcs. In the 41st millennium, the Orcs are the single most hilarious chapter, or the single most, uh, the single most hilarious threat to humanity. Imagine a bunch of cockneys which are just absolutely f jacked up on roids and love to fight and nick and scrap and whatever, okay? They just, they, fighting to them is as important, it's as important as eating is to us, okay? They need to fight, it's a, it's a basic part of their DNA. And the thing is that when humanity first encounters the orcs, even back in the dark age of technology, they find out something very, very quickly, and that's that the orcs, they love getting into melee. They love beating you with their fists, which is, which reminds us of pretty much every West Ham family I've ever met. As a result, humanity realizes it has to try and engage the Xenos from range. It can't, it can't deal with them up close and personal. So it develops a, it develops a weapon platform on the Rhino chassis, which will become known as the Predator. So whilst humanity had possessed the Rhino template for some time, the close melee combat favoured by the Orcs would show vulnerabilities in the design, not least of which that it didn't have enough firearms to protect itself. It only had a single point defence weapon for basically supporting infantry leaving the vehicle. Thus, as a result, they would decide to remove the transport capacity, stick a great big turret on top and a pair of side, side sponsored weapons, and go, fair enough, this will work, and lo and behold, it began to have an incredible impact. Uh, they would end up having a huge advantage over the Orcs and would end up driving them out of several sectors during humanity's expansion. So following humanity's collapse in the Age of Strife, the Imperium of Man is born, uh, led by the immortal God Emperor. Depending on who you ask, whether he's a God Emperor or not, that's a whole other context in and of itself. I just wanted to point that out because there's going to be a 40k fan in the chat going, he's not the immortal god emperor, he is just a normal man, and that verse is most likely a word bearer's legionnaire. So, slight tangent there. So the Predator would end up becoming the mainstay of the Space Marine Legions during what is known as the Great Crusade, in which the Emperor takes humanity into the stars and tries to reconquer all of the lost worlds. It would, be, it would play the primary role of the battle tank of the Space Marine Legions throughout this conflict. And it would start out very similar to something like a Bradley or a BMP. The initial designs for, that the Space Marines Legion uses has the main gun, it has a side-sponsored mount, but it has a small transport capacity for four, for four Space Marines. Um, this is eventually sort of gotten rid of because they have the Rhinos, they have other weapon systems as well that can they can also use to transport space marines around. They might as well just turn the Predator into a full-on armoured fighting vehicle that they can use for full-on engagement. Basically give it more ammunition. Four Battle Brothers is not exactly a small amount of space to try and accommodate. You know, get rid of the get rid of those four. You've now got a ton more ammunition for your services. By the time of what happens uh, sorry, by the time of what's known as the Horus Heresy, in which half the Space Marine Legions and half the Imperium turns traitor against the Emperor, the Predators would be heavily employed by both sides. Some some legions, such as the Iron Warriors Legion and the, uh, the Iron Hands, have loads and loads of these machines, and they battle on galactic-sized tank skirmishes in which they just batter each other to death. Despite this, however, and despite the huge numbers of machines that are involved, as is the case in the 40k settings, these vehicles are completely overlooked by the god engines of the Titan war machines. Um, and the Titans, which can literally have weapons that will destroy a battalion of tanks with a single blast. This, this is the thing, you if anyone ever studies 40k, this is what you'll find out about it. Oh yes, I have this big gun. It doesn't matter, someone over there has an even bigger gun, and guess what, it is even more terrifying than it sounds. So in the 10,000 years since the Horus Heresy, the Predator has continued its service both within the Imperium and within the Chaos Legions. Chaos Legions in particular, we'll get into how they use theirs. 
In a modern Space Marine chapter, Predators normally total between 20 and 30 vehicles and make up the bulk of the chapter's armoured fighting forces. Some chapters will boast significantly higher numbers of vehicles, Black Templars are a good example, and the Iron Hands. Uh, this is largely due to their skill at recovering damaged vehicles rather than waiting for reinforcements. Um, Black Templars are notorious for just looting battlefields work because they are a crusading chapter. They don't have a homeworld, they just fly around in their giant fleets and are constantly fighting and don't really have the time to wait for reinforcements. So they just loot battlefields. They'll loot uh, other chapters' gear. If other chapters think, well, we can't recover that thing, it's damaged beyond all, all hell. The Black Templars will go, okay, better ain't, and they'll nick it and then they'll use it themselves. The Iron Hands are also very similar, but the Iron Hands, um, they're much more skilled and more diplomatic about nicking things, if you know what I mean. The use of the Rhino chassis itself is really, really, really handy for Space Marine chapters in general. If we take something, if we take a chapter like the Black Templars, who are constantly crusading and are constantly on the move, they sometimes do not get the supplies that they need to keep going. As a result, a lot of what they do is just taking parts from from damaged or destroyed vehicles. And using the Rhino chassis is really, really handy because it means that all the running gears, all the suspensions, all the engine compartments, everything is roughly the same on each vehicle with very minor changes. This means that if you have a Predator that is damaged and you need to get spare parts, you can simply take it from a Rhino which you aren't using. You can simply take out, you know, uh, you know, a, a running gear and put it onto the Predator and it will work. It's really quite a handy system and it means that the Space Marines can keep fighting and keep going. This is also true for the Legions of Chaos. Um, Chaos Space Marines aren't, are no longer supplied by the Imperium because they're obviously traitors. So they have to do a lot of looting from battlefields. They have to try and capture gear where possible. The Iron Warriors are a notoriously good chapter at this. They have, they boast, I mean, they're masters of siege warfare. They boast huge numbers of armored vehicles as it is, but they will nick anything. And I do mean anything. If it's not tied down, that's it. They're having it and they'll repair it or they'll scrap it and turn it into something they want. In terms of Predator variants, there are multiple types. The two most common versions are the Predator Destructor and the Predator Annihilator. The Destructor is armed with a single auto cannon in the turret and a pair of heavy bolters mounted on each side sponsor and for one on each side. The Destructor is designed to engage enemy infantry and light vehicles. So for non-Warhammer lineage, the heavy bolter is a larger version of what the Space Marine bolter is. The standard Space Marine bolter fires a 75 caliber projectile. This is basically an armor piercing grenade launcher which hits a target, it penetrates, it buries itself into the target and then it detonates which means that most targets implode when they are hit by this weapon system. Now what I would like you to do is having taken everything I've just said about that weapon I want you to up it now to a caliber of .998 and then you get the heavy bolter which also has a higher rate of fire. <laughs> it, it's, it can fire up to a thousand rounds a minute whilst the auto cannon mounted on top can push out 250 rounds. Both are fed by internal belt systems and can be loaded by the crews internally, which means that they never have to expose themselves to enemy fire. This is the, this is the hilarious part about the 40k universe. It, it, there is always something terrifying around the corner which can just blow you to pieces. It's, it's, it's scary. So the Annihilator compared to the Devastator, or compared to the Destructor, sorry, is your anti-armor weapon system. It carries a pair of twin-linked LAS cannons instead of the auto cannon. So the LAS cannon is a really hard way, it's really hard to describe. The nearest thing that I could think to describe it is a railgun. And even then, that doesn't really come close to what the LAS cannon is, but that's the closest thing that we have in a modern military sense. It is effectively a power source, of, uh, uh, it's, and it's a concentrated beam of, of pure energy, which can penetrate virtually any known armour in the 40k universe. There is very little on a battlefield that can resist this thing, other than like the super heavy vehicles fielded by the Imperial Guard. 
The sponsored mounts can also be changed to las cannons in this case. It really depends on the combat situation. Some vehicles will, have, will keep the heavy bolters, some will switch to las cannons, some might switch to heavy flamers, and some will just put uh, multi melters, which are again anti armor weapons, but they have very, 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 very close range. In the modern 40k universe, uh, predators are usually seen operating in smaller groups as part of Space Marine chapters or in support of a company, usually a tenth of a company's strength. So, oh, sorry, I got that wrong. So, in terms of a Space Marine layout, you have a, a chapter is a thousand Marines and there are ten companies, each of a hundred Battle Brothers. Predators will normally be distributed amongst various companies in order to serve the purpose of supporting them. In the service of chaos, this is thrown out the window. Their tactical usage is just whoever can, whichever chaos warlord can pretty much get the service of the tank commander or the platoon commander, and they will just fight in their own way. The discipline is just like it's out of the window. They don't really care. Um, they will tend to just wander the battlefields hunting for their own kills. Uh, contests amongst chaos tank aces is not uncommon even if it means that tactically they throw away any advantages that they would have had. The only the only ones who actually maintain the discipline are the Iron Warriors. I actually play the Iron Warriors in game, I, I do enjoy them, they're a very cool chapter. Or not chapter, sorry, Chaos Legion. They, they are the only ones to really maintain the discipline because they have such a steely resolve that they 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 hate everything they hate everything and they hate you and they don't know what they hate you they don't know why they hate you but they hate you they hate the imperium they hate the chaos gods they hate other legions they don't like anybody but their discipline has been maintained for ten thousand years and therefore they still operate their tanks very effectively they will operate in a very soviet style with blunt waves and they'll just throw their predators at a target but because there are so many of them and because their crews are normally very highly skilled, they will tend to come away the successors in many engagements. So that pretty much concludes the Predator main battle tank uh, within the Space Marine Legions. Now, I do hope you have enjoyed this little Warhammer tangent version of this. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Again, I would like you to just stress the thanks to the 503 subscribers um it means the world that people are still watching these and i really really hope to get back to these very very soon i would love to thank you all for the support please like and subscribe to the video if you if, if you think it deserves that um and again i hope you all have a wonderful day many thanks and i'll see you on the next one